Uh, yeah, this is, we could do this, sir. This is fine. Okay, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Botany Does. And today I'm coming to you from uh, the savannah west of uh, Winhoek, Namibia, uh, in uh, southern Africa. You can see we're surrounded by undulating hills and a wide variety of uh, spine tipped leguminous uh, trees and shrubs. And uh, right here we're standing on a metamorphosed uh, sedimentary rock. So basically, old ocean sediments that have been cooked. Got a nice luster to them. You can see the uh, different sand grains and what the shit. There's locusts all around. I just found this uh, milkweed relative. This uh, spiny. You can see that right there. You got those uh, coronas, hoods, gynostegium, reflex petals. We are entering the dry season now, but uh, there's still stuff going off. Look, you got bleeding some. Uh, latex right there so we got an asclepiad you got the opposite leaves chordate leaves leaves that are opposite each other on the stem and again you'd know a milkweed flower anywhere you've seen it look at it looking like little hockey pucks before those uh petals open up revealing those yellow flowers okay right here we got a member of the mint family lamiaceae there's the flowers right there bilaterally symmetrical fuzzy as hell the leaves are fuzzy too very tomatose an adaptation to uh, the hot and the dry, to this uh, leguminous, very arid uh, grassland. You can see just coming up beneath them. What the shit is this, an acacia or some Some sort of damn pea. One of the mimosoids. Check out those flowers again. That's nice. Look at that. Oh, look at that. The two, two brown anthers sticking out of that bilaterally symmetrical flower with the fuzzy cuculate hood. Apparently those seeds are hitchhikers, whatever the shit this is. Never mind, it's coming from, it's a composite. It's in a keen. Goddamn asters, see that? So it's coming from a species of composite, member of, member of the family Asteraceae. Like, that makes sense, see? You could, you could tell there's herbivores around probably to help disperse these. They, they seem to stick to a clothing and animal fur pretty readily. As you can see, we just got the more of the same undulating hills shrubbery, uh, mimosoid legumes, lots of grasslands. We got uh, this interesting guy right here. Just looking uh, kind of graminoid itself. And then there's those uh, flowers up top. Amaranthaceae is the family on this one. You can see the beta lane pigments. Petals or bricks? Photosynthetic stems, not many leaves. Leaves are folded, linear. It's coming up right here in this uh, dry grassland. Urmstadia odorata goes east into Botswana a little bit and then the eastern uh, South Africa as well. Look at these monster aloes we got over here. Aloe littoralis. You can see them quite tall, they're about 12 feet. And look at the geology, this uh, metamorphous uh, sediments. Probably 500 million year old uh, sediments right there. With the nice quartzite. I hear baboons screaming in the distance. I know that bark wherever I hear it. There you go, there's a, there's a nice uh, aloe littoralis in, in full flower and full bloom. Look, you got a bird going up in there, pollinating it. That's nice. So it looks like Elopharax, except there's uh, not as many spines on the leaves, and uh, they're not as robust. But both Elopharax and Allolitoralis uh, are uh, these coalescent uh, aloes. They get rather large. Okay, starting to descend a bit in elevation, head westwards to the coast. And uh, we're getting out of that grass in here. You can see this uh, little daisy, a little purple daisy, all glandular, uh, just growing out of a rock face. Growing out of a rock wall, nice. There's another daisy up there, look at that. It's little caps, little composites. Very glandular though, very sticky. That monster armored locust, ugh, Jesus Christ. How you doing, buddy? Look at, look at that, how you doing? I don't think anyone's gonna eat you. 
Look at this, right here we got a member of uh, Plumbaginaceae. Look at those distinct uh, bracts, those distinct calices, winged. And of course they put out little winged fruits. Saw this genus in South Africa. Growing as a little shrub right here. Along with some uh, nasty looking nightshade. The berries reportedly taste very terrible. Just looks like a, a toxic tomato. Spines too. Evidence of uh, evolving with herbivores. So birds are likely meant to disperse those fruits, not mammals. God, look at how spiny it is. Mean fucking solanum. Jesus. Okay, this is a weird one. You wouldn't think it, but this is a member of the Catalpa family. This is Catalphractes alexandri, and it goes uh, east into Botswana. Tends to prefer limestone or calcrete soils, but you could see it's uh, we're entering the dry season now, so it's kind of deciduous. Look at those fuzzy tomentose leaves, though. Got spines on it, too. And pink, maybe golf ball-sized flowers when it's going off. Okay, so as we go down in elevation, we got a nice cool breeze, but uh, it, it still is pretty hot. We got a member of the elephant tree family, Bursaraceae. The elephant tree and frankincense family. This is a species of comifera. You can see you know, that peeling bark. You got a succulent trunk. And there's those leaves just about to drop for the dry season. Pretty much already dropped. <clears throat> And like most members of the frankincense family, those those twigs, when you break them, they exude a, uh, I think it smells pretty pleasant, a pleasant smelling resin. I think you get that peeling bark everywhere. Looks just like uh, Bursera, the genus Bursera in, uh, that we get in North America. And indeed, it's the same family. So I'm about to go drought deciduous here for the winter. Okay, here we go. Growing on the margins of a wash. Remember the sesame family, Pedaliaceae. It stinks like hell. It's a pretty good trademark of a family. Opposite leaves, order Lamialis. There's the zygomorphic, aka the bilaterally symmetrical flowers right there. Look at that stigma. A bifid stigma. Hairs on the, on the uh, corolla. And hairs on the fruits, too. See uh, the style still persisting, even after the flowers gone, and then these are just maturing fruits. So these were flowers maybe a, maybe a month ago. Pedaliaceae. There's quite a few members in uh, Africa of Pedaliaceae, and they all smell pretty pretty goddamn bad, pretty terrible. Did you know that the, that sesame seeds came from a plant in a, the mint order Lamialis? There we go. See, look at that bifid, look at that bifid uh, stigma on that guy. See that? It's kind of like a monkey flower. Monkey flowers do that too. And then, of course, there's those four stamens with four anthers at a different level. So the dynamis stamens. Looks like an epic flood came through here. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they did. They got some good rains this year, I guess. Who's this? Yeah, all right, this is a fucking weirdo, too. Valia capensis. The genus, it's the only genus in the order of Valiales, And it's uh, all, they're all African. There's like five or six species in the entire order. So the family's Valiaceae, the order's Valiales. Tiny little yellow flowers. Yeah, whatever, I don't know. All right. All right, so there's the east from which, whence we came. You can see the landscape's opening up. We're no longer in the mountains. You see some really beautiful granite, the... Uh, Looks like a granite or quartzite domes over there. Probably quartzite, I'd assume. Metamorphous sandstone. And uh, over there, you got some uh, Aloodendron dicotomum, the, uh, the, a.k.a. the quiver trees. The quiver trees. Because uh, I guess these stems used to be hollowed out and used to hold arrows. Those massive bastards. And then right here, we got a weird composite, a weird cap. Asteraceae's the family. Look at these net-like and heavily barbed... Uh, of phyleries. There's the uh, capitulum still going off, and uh, right there you can see the achenes and a flower, a post mature flower ready to disperse with the wind. Look how plumose they are, just spilling out of there. And even the leaves are just covered in tiny little trichomes, barbed trichomes. 
Doesn't seem to be stopping some of the grasshoppers, though. Yeah, look at it. You even got glands on there. Just in case those barbed, uh, those little barbs weren't enough to keep you away. Just in case those trichomes weren't enough to keep you away, you got uh, some glands with some uh, probably toxic resin on them. Again, just results of evolving in a, a landscape just rife with the things that want to eat you. Look at it. We got a little, it looks like maybe it's an indigo fur, and then right here we have a little Armania. Malvasi bitinarioid subfamily. See a tiny little, tiny little pendant Malvaceous flowers. Malvaceous calyx. Dude, look at how those five red petals just swirl around. That little corolla. Can you see the anthers in there? It's too dark. Everything's just covered in the uh, akines, the seeds from one of these uh, nearby grasses. Just making it look like it's got cobwebs. And there, there's the fruit on that Hermania. See that distinct capsule. Hermania is a really species-rich genus in South Africa. You get a few few in Namibia, and then I think you get one or two species in North America, too. One or two disjuncts. You have fruit. Okay, getting ever closer to the coast, you could see we're headed west. You could see these uh, right here. We've encountered some volcanic rocks, some volcanic geology, the striations. Wonder what caused those. And lots of grass, more grass than you would ever see in South Africa. So much grass. You can see the akines of whatever species that is. Those uh, poof ball seeds just going everywhere. And then right here we have a succulent member of the creosote family. Zygophilaceae is the family there. Opposite leaves, quite succulent, woody stem, and uh, there's the fruits. And of course, we've seen a lot of goddamn grasshoppers because they had a very, uh, a very rainy summer. So that uh, abundance of greenery is, in, of course, invited all the goddamn grasshoppers. What is this? This, looks, this is that volcanic rock we're seeing. Looks like it might be dolerite, might be uh, Ikea base, might just be basalt. But it is volcanic, so it cooled rather quickly uh, above above ground or close to the surface, close enough to cool quickly. Landscape of grass. Here's a little, uh, what's this, Isoase, it looks like a sesuvium. Look at the betalane pigments. Caryophyllales is the order there. Look at those folded succulent leaves. Multiple stamens. Here it is again. You can see there's the uh, calyxes with all the tiny black seeds inside. What the shit? Well, which is somewhere over there. And look at this. Well, how do you feel about the succulent milkweeds? What the shit? Is this Larry Leachia? Certainly looks like it. Look at the tubercles. Just resembling a, a rock. Coming up on the sand next to the basalt. What a goddamn weird, what a weird plant. Leafless, succulent stem milkweed. Member of the Asclepiodoidae subfamily of Apostanaceae. Look at the texture of it. This is as good as mine as to what the shit this could be. Little packet called bastard. Look at that leafless. Is it dead or dormant? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with dormant. Look at that massive trunk though. Yeah, it's it was it look at all the growth. That's all the growth that had this here. You could see that tissue is still fresh and just hardening off. There's this year's growth. There's this year's growth. Jesus. All that juice stored in that trunk, just waiting for the next rain. Maybe next summer, huh? Looking at the ground, I keep expecting to see a lithops. You know, one of the uh, succulent living stones from the family that's so species rich around here, the eyes always and the sems. You could see what they would how they would blend in so easily there. Here though, look, there's just all this all these pebbles on the ground. Especially those little quartz bits. Then you come upon one that just uh, happens to be uh a living plant with a lot of uh, red pigments in it with its top of its stem just flush with the ground. You can see how they thrive <clears throat> how they thrive here and how this environment would have uh, evolutionarily sculpted them, como se dice. 
but I don't see any. So maybe they're not here, but they sure would. You know, they sh if they're not here, they sure uh, would uh, would fit in great. Remnants of an albuca or something. Some member of asparagales. And how can you tell? Because you got, there are the seeds right there. Got those little black phytomelanin encrusted seeds everywhere. But of course it's dormant right now. It flowered and went the fruit over the summer and the bulb is down there. Look at this weirdo. What the shit is this? This looks like that new plant that was just discovered uh, southeast of here by about eight hours. Teganophyton. I mean, it's not, because surely someone would have uh, seen it here already, but... A plant that was so new that it was put in its own family. It's so unrelated, found to be so unrelated to anything else. Look at that. It does just have those little rosettes of, uh, of leaves, though. What a weirdo. Okay, so now we're, we're within about, I don't know, 20, 25 kilometers of the coast, and uh, we're here to see one of the most enigmatic plants. Uh, definitely a bucket list plant. A really, uh, really bizarre evolutionary wonder. And that would be uh, these guys right here, Wawichia mirabilis. Just looking like a, just looking like a, an old, a giant old mop just sprawled out on this uh, quartzy sand. There we go. So plants are dioecious. Individuals of Wawichia mirabilis are dioecious, meaning they're either male or female. They either produce male structures or female structures. This one is producing male structures, aka stroboli. And there's those, uh, there's the microstroboli right there. And those are, uh, I, I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. It's not a flowering plant. It's, it's technically a conifer. Its closest relatives are ephedra and a uh, plant in the genus Needum. But uh, you can see that's where the pollen comes out of. Right there, out of those little uh, filaments poking out of those bracts. Technically not stamens, because it's, it's not a flowering plant. And there's that massive, massive woody caudex down there. Who knows how old this one is. Some can live up to be 1,500 to 2,000 years old. Just a really bizarre, phenomenal plant. Just a really weird motherfucker. A wonderful, a wonderful and beautiful and weird motherfucker. Just the remnant of the Jurassic. Look at that. Technically just two leaves. The same two leaves. So that's one leaf right there. It just splits and breaks up. Very leathery. Just ends up with this sprawling mat all over the sandy plains. See, there's another individual right there. Also a male. There's fossils of Wawichia in South America. And that's, uh, you know, so they shared a distribution before the Atlantic Ocean existed, or, or at least when the Atlantic Ocean was much narrower. So, you know, you know how South America fits right snug into uh, Western Africa, into that Western coast of Africa. So there was Wawichia on the South American continent at one time. Who knows, 80 million years ago? When did that start? When did that, uh, when did those continents start ripping apart? 80, 90 million years ago? Sometime in the Cretaceous? This looks like it might actually be a, a few plants, a couple, two individuals right next to each other. Let's get a nice money shot of those uh, micro stroboli again, those, those male cones. For a long time it was thought that this plant was just wind pollinated, but uh, it seems there's actually an insect involved as well. I can't get a look at that codex down there. See, this is nice. They put they put a little ring around it, you know, so no one comes and drives on it. So this is a female. Here's a female individual of which you could see those cones. And uh, who's that hanging out right there? Look at those insects. What are they doing? Looks like they might be sucking some kind of juice out of it. God, what a what an incredible fucking weirdo! Ah, I love you. Look at that. I've seen you know I've, they cultivate these at UC Davis Botanical Garden in the conservatory, and they got it. They put them in these these chimney pipes that are you know with really deep, uh, really deep pots and terracotta chimney chimney spouts. 
Because I guess they need deep pots and cultivation. It was thought for a long time that the roots go extremely deep, but that turned out to not be so true. They don't go more than, I think, two or three meters, from what I know. Some wonderful papers on Wawichi available on a Google Scholar, and then you can just go steal them on Sci-Hub. Look at these cones. Not open yet, though. And when they, when they do mature, they just disintegrate, and you get these little flaky seeds. Just like any conifer. So look at this guy, a succulent amaranth, a succulent member of the amaranth they see. The only other plant growing anywhere around here, Arthuria lubnitiae. It's the weird succulent, you know, it's more barren here than it is 20 miles inland. And this guy's just the happy little, little shrubby amaranth with those fuzzy uh, flowers, fuzzy inflorescences. Hey, look at those, look at those tiny flowers in there, see that? See, so yeah, you can see the beta lane, that beta lane pink. We're gonna, that's gonna be a new Crayola color, beta lane pink. So this is Sympatric. This plant grows Sympatric with Wellwichia, which of course I never knew until I came out here and seen it. But that's good to know. Whole fucking landscape's incredible. Look at this. So these Wellwichia bugs live on the plant. There's nothing else here that, that could support them. They live on a plant, they suck its juices. It was thought that they pollinated for a while. This might be bullshit, but either way, this is their habitat, this is their home. Without well witchy, these bugs couldn't survive. They don't, they don't, uh, they couldn't live anywhere else. There's nothing else out here for them to eat. It's pretty incredible. So well witchy is their ecosystem. On the coastal fog deserts of Namibia and Southwest Angola. It's just this sprawling mop. This thing's like, how old is this? Huh? How many hundreds, if not thousands of years? They can live for 2,000 years. Look at that. Look at that massive codex. Jesus Christ. So again, I can't tell what's going on. I mean, this is a single leaf. You can see right there. It's just a single leaf that's split. But then you've got this codex kind of... You know, I'm going to go with this is all the same leaf right here. It's all the same single leaf and this is just the apex of the plant who knows how old 1500 years how long has it been sitting here doing its thing just a mass a mass of wood look at the two bugs banging on the uh, megastrobolus look at that See tiny little hairs poking out from in between those bracts. Is that part of the, uh, the ovary? Yeah, what a weird gymnosperm. More closely related to redwoods than it is to any flowering plant. See that? The microsporangia poking out from in between, in between those two bracts. So two bracts on either side of that male cone. That quadrangular, elongated male cone. Look at that goddamn grass seed still stuck in there. Look at the stalks holding the microstroboli up. And again, just the same two leaves along the whole, uh, the whole width of the plant. Look at that, here's a little one. A small female. Just about to reduce, oh, she's got some resin coming out. Got some resin coming out of that uh, cone right there. So there's recruitment, that's nice. Who knows how old this one is? Maybe 20 years? Could be 50 years? You can see they've still got that little codex there. God, what a, what a cool. <laughs> Anyone who knows about this plant is pretty enthralled by it, just because it's so bizarre. And you can see the habitat that it grows on is so barren and empty as well. Here's a younger one, probably born in the last century. You can see these cones. You can see what, how they just split apart. Not quite ready yet. But they just disintegrate, like many conifers do, at least members of the pine family. And, uh, and they've got these little winged seeds that are wind dispersed. Oh, here's one. 
Doesn't look like it's got a good seed in it, but it just looks like a, you know something you'd see on an abies, on a fir. Or maybe a, a true cedar, you know, the genus Cedrus. You can see these have not, they don't have much height to them yet. They're still just flush with the ground. So seeing these, it makes you realize how old some of the ones uh, that we were just looking at over there to the left might be. Since they've got some some height, some both some height and some girth. Here's an old, uh, here's an old, uh, not inflorescence, but a, a compound, <laughs> a compound of uh, female cones of megastroboli. You know, it's so weird. There's not even, I mean, there there is terminology for it. I just don't know it because I've, you know, I'm not, uh, it's not every day you see a Wawichia. See, this one's getting ready to, to disintegrate on the stock. Wind dispersed seeds. Look at her. She got some goddamn woolly aphids or some what they should some scale on these what is the uh, ecosystem of well witchy like what are you guys doing here who the shit are you huh look here's one that's half dead it's still got one leaf coming off of it but you could see this was all the same plant the apex of the plant that woody codex just starts to form a ring after a while so that bastard's quite old as well or maybe it's a she. I don't know. I wouldn't want to misgender a uh, well witch yet. Yeah, it's a she. All right. Well, light's getting low. That's about all I got for you this, uh, this evening. Hopefully you got some out of that. What a weird plant. <laughs> Just a weird lineage. Unrelated to almost anything else on Earth. Not closely related to anything else on Earth. But technically, if you want to, you know, you want to, you want to get into the nitty gritty it's it's somewhat related to a ephedra and needham but uh it's out there it's on its own evolutionary branch all right that's all i got for you this evening have a good rest of your day go fuck yourself bye now as you could see this is the next morning the fog is thick here you could smell the ocean it's very close but uh Water vapor is very heavy in the air. You can again, you can smell the ocean. So our uh, our latitude is probably I don't know 24 degrees, maybe yeah, maybe about 24, 25. But you could just see how intensely foggy it is. There's some plants out there. I don't believe that's what witchy. But this kind of habitat, it's I mean, it is interesting to note that the closer we get to the coast, the more barren the landscape became, the less there was growing. Inland, it's grassy, rolling hills. Uh, dominated by grasses and uh, uh, mimosoid legumes, just uh, you know, vichelias, aka acacias, and what this shit. They got some wonderful lichens on the ground right there. Look at that. But the closer you get to the coast, the more barren it is. And and I I'm assuming that has something to do with why well witchy thrives here. It's one of the few plants that can take this kind of habitat, these fog deserts. So it just occupies a narrow band that parallels the Atlantic coast off the western coast of the African continent. It goes on up into Angola a little bit, and it starts somewhere, its southern population starts somewhere on Walvis Bay in Namibia. It's a very odd habitat here. Those cold ocean currents give us all the fog. It's like this every morning. And those huge wide leaves of Wawichia just, just collect that fog, condense it, and transfer it to the center of the plant. Just kind of funnel it to the center of the plant. There's only one or two other species of plants that we've seen for the last 30 miles. So it's Wawichia and uh, whatever that guy is over there, that uh, that weird amaranth they see. So anyway, low competition and a very uh, a very strange and a hard to occupy environment. This fog desert's the the perfect place for where Wawichia can cling to life, kind of like how the redwoods do. The coastal redwoods do on the northern coast of California, kind of hug, hugging the ocean right there.